All right. Um, let's take a moment to pray, and then we'll get started. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this week. Thank you for all the students who are here, those who have joined us online. And thank you, Lord, for uh, all that's being presented to us, imparted to us, uh, to help us prepare for the journey ahead. I pray, Father, that you will speak to each of our hearts, challenge us, and help us to keep our focus clear, our purpose clear. And uh, we ask that you will direct our paths and prepare us, equip us for the future that you have for us. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So first of all, thank you for coming and uh, being part of uh, APC Bible College. Some of you uh, are returning students. We already know each other. Uh, some of you are new. And uh, I'm sure we'll get to know each other uh, over the next few months and so on. Now, in this orientation week, our uh, main purpose is to kind of give you an understanding of what you're getting into, right? Um, that, and especially what we plan to do or what we intend doing here at APC Bible College, right? Um, for us, um, in the Bible College, uh, we want to bring to our students um, practical things for Christian ministry. So you're being equipped here to go and do Christian ministry, right? That means we expect that after you finish, uh, then you're going to go, you're going to do, you're going to serve the Lord somewhere, either in your in the local church from where you came from, or some of you may go and start something new. Uh, there's so many options, so many things. God can lead each one of us in different ways. But the purpose here is to equip you so that you can serve God effectively. And so we've planned these three years in such a way. We're building upon year upon year. So first year, we deal with a lot of basic things, basic topics. Second year, we build upon that. And the third year, we get into a lot of more detailed, practical things. So we, you know, we've planned these three years in an uh, uh, intentional way. But the other thing is very important is, uh, so, so the goal is not just to accumulate knowledge. Right? There's no point in just... Yeah, I, I've learned everything about the Bible, and that's not the goal. It's important to know God's Word, but it's also important to, that you become a vessel that God can use. You understand it, right? God is not just going to use the knowledge you have. Getting knowledge about the Word of God is good, is important. Uh, it's an important part of being a minister, but God is going to use you as a vessel. So another important part that we want to uh, emphasize here is to you being shaped as a person, your character, your attitudes, your heart. Those things are very important. In fact, sometimes we might even say that's probably more important than the knowledge that we have about the Word of God. Who you are, you as a vessel is so important so that's another part of what we will be working on in our journey here in helping shape you of course god is the one who does the work in us by his spirit by his word but we as fellow believers are going to help you you know uh, align yourself to what god wants to do in your life so that you can be shaped you can be prepared right so in the course of that, and in order to accomplish that and helping shape us, we are going to ask you to do things maybe you've never done before. We're going to ask you to do things. You say, I don't know. I don't know about your background. I don't know about your attitude. Your, you know, for instance, we might ask you, arrange the chairs. You say, I've never arranged my chairs in my house. Somebody does it. But here in Bible College, we do it. Right? We do the work. Right? So right from the pastor to everyone down, we arrange chairs, we sweep the floor, we do everything together. There's no difference. 
Just because you become pastor doesn't mean now you don't you stop sweeping the floor. No. Yeah, sometimes you have to pick the broom and clean the floor. You may be pastor, it's okay. Doesn't matter. Just you are the vessel. Your attitude matters. Your character matters. Are you understanding? So here in the Bible college, we're going to ask you to do those kinds of things. Why? Because you are the prophet. And your attitude is important. You have to have the heart of a servant and you have to be willing to do anything and you always do it i'm doing it for jesus amen you're not doing it for me you're not doing it for abc bible college you're not doing it for anyone else you are doing it for jesus so when you take the broom you're sweeping the floor lord jesus i'm doing this for you amen you think about the cross. He carried the cross. He was beaten for you. So Lord, if you did that for me, this is nothing. For me to clean the floor, for me to arrange the chairs, for me to wipe the desk, that is nothing. If you suffered so much, you took my sin, for me to do something like this for you, Lord, is nothing. I understand. Right? And this is part of your training. This is part of your ministry. You know, some just some years back, and, and, and this is real. I'm not just making this up. You know, some years back, we were, you know, our team, our missions team, we were uh, in some place. I think, I think it must be somewhere uh, in Barampur, Orissa, or somewhere we had gone. Uh, uh, we had planned, you know, we had rented the hall, the auditorium, the, the town hall. It belonged to the government, government building. So we had planned, ahead, you know, we're going to rent that hall. We'll come there. We'll have a... Uh, a meeting like a, you know and a, and a whole team went and by the time the meeting was supposed to start at six o'clock by the time he reached it was three o'clock in the afternoon so we only had three hours but when he came to the town hall it was a mess terrible mess so everything outside there were all kinds of garbage outside open the hall it was so dirty so uh, this is a government building. They don't bother anything. But we are going to have a meeting there at 6 p.m. We have informed everybody to come. And this hall is in such a mess. We've just landed. We've just reached. So what to do? Everybody. We all said, let's clean up the place. It's a big hall. You know, uh, I forget how, how, how big it was. But it had all these fixed chairs. Some chairs were broken. There was garbage everywhere. Worship team, you know, they had to practice. Sound and setup team, they have to set up all the equipment. Um, but the hall was like this. So from the pastor to everyone, everybody taking the broom, sweeping, cleaning. Yeah. Some people come and say, Pastor, you don't do this. I said, no, no, I have to. This is my responsibility. This is for Jesus. I'm not doing it for you. I'm not doing it for you. This is for Jesus. I will take the broom. I will clean. It doesn't matter. Because we are going to have a meeting in three hours. This hall has to be clean. When people come, it should be clean. So this is real. This is ministry. Are you understanding? Yes or no? Some of you want to go home now? <laughs> no. I'm, the reason I'm saying it is this is what ministry is about, right? You have to have the heart of a servant. Doesn't matter anything. I will do it. If, you have, if I have to clean the toilets, I will do it. It's not below me. I'll do it. Anyway, at home I clean, so I can clean here. doesn't matter. So it's not an issue. Because the, whatever we do, we are doing it for Jesus. With that heart, with that motivation, if you serve, nothing is too below you to do. I can do anything. Because I'm doing it for Jesus. Amen. So in these three years, uh, we are going to work on both these things. That is your understanding of spiritual things, your learning of spiritual things. That is important, but also your character, who you are as a person, you as a vessel of God, your attitude, your character, your discipline, uh, the, having the right heart, the heart of a servant is so important. So those things we are going to work on. And for some of us, it will be difficult. You know, I remember like two years ago, some students came here, like a new batch. First week, we said, okay, you know, this is like this. Please take the mop, mop the floor. 
two girls they said even in our house our parents don't make us mop the floor how come you are telling us to do it I said this is part of your training I said we will not I said okay if you don't want please leave we will give you your money back go we sent them back we wrote a letter to their parents this is because if you cannot do it again you're not passing even day one you're not going to crash we sent them home yeah because this is the if, if the heart is not right all the knowledge is of no use understanding right so here in these three years have the heart of a servant i'll do anything i'll serve i will do it and whatever i do i'm doing it for the lord jesus i'm not doing it for my lecturer or somebody else i'm doing it for jesus but that had it right so today uh for you online students uh do the same thing wherever you are you know you may be in your local church wherever which were part of india wherever you are joining from have the same thing you know we may not be able to see you and we may not be able to uh, check on you physically but go to your local church or in your area wherever you are you serve um, like with the heart of a servant whatever your you know whatever is needed there you just serve because this character in addition to all the learning in addition to all the knowledge uh, god has to shape us as vessels so that we can serve right and uh, even if you're a pastor of a thousand member church it's okay take the broom and sweep it'll keep you humble and there will be more grace on your life because the bible says god gives grace to the humble so he doesn't give grace to the proud he gives grace to the humble so it's good to be humble it's good to keep yourself in a place of humility before god because then he pours grace on your life okay now today what i want to do with us is i want to talk to us about following jesus so in these three hours that i'll, I'll be speaking to us and sharing with us um, i want to bring our attention to this theme following jesus so uh, if you're taking notes you can open your bible your pen and uh, and uh, just take some notes here we're going to look at scripture and uh, i want to emphasize a few things right so the first in this first session the first main point that i want to emphasize is that our calling is to be like jesus right so you write that down our calling is to be like jesus that must be very clear what does god want to do for you what does god want you to be who does god want you to become like what is god trying to work in you and in me we will see i will look at these scriptures but our calling is to be like jesus now around this in this camp and in this building you see pictures of some great men and women of god god has used them in their day and time and this week in the afternoons we've been listening to different god's generals you know, hearing about different god's generals. there are many many wonderful men and women whom god has used it's good to look at their lives it's good to learn from their lives but our calling is not to be like them our calling is to be like Jesus. so we are not followers of billy graham thank god for billy graham his life that he lived and his testimony and ministry we can learn a lot but our calling is not to be like billy graham our calling is to be like Jesus. we will learn from him his life we will learn from you know there are so many wonderful test uh, men and women of god you will learn from their lives but our calling is to be like jesus and so the question you always have to ask yourself is am i becoming more and more like 
Jesus. Am I becoming more and more like Jesus? Lord, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be more like him. That's my calling. That's your calling. Okay. So let's uh, just, just start off by looking at that, that God's plan for us, God's plan for us is to become like Jesus. If you go with me to Matthew chapter 10, we're going to look at different scriptures, please. So um, write them down and also turn in your Bibles with me. We go to Matthew chapter 10. And uh, in verse 24, uh, verses 24 and 25, Matthew chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. You know, this is what the Lord Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He spoke these words then, and he would still speak these words to you and me today. What did he tell them? In Matthew 10, 24 and 25, he said, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. I'll stop there. So, what is Jesus saying? A disciple is not greater than his master. A servant or a disciple than his teacher, a servant is not greater than his master. And it is enough if the disciple becomes like his teacher or the servant becomes like his master. That's all. That's all we're asking. That's all Jesus wants. It's enough if you become like like Jesus. So imagine Jesus is talking to his disciples. We'll put it in a simple way. He's there. And imagine you are there. And Jesus is telling you, I want to tell you something. You are my disciples. You are not greater than the teacher. You're not greater than the master. All I want you is to be like me. It's enough for the disciple to be like his teacher. For the servant to be like his, that's enough. But he says something very important. The disciple is not greater than the teacher. What does that mean? It means if the teacher paid a price to get to that level, then the disciple must also pay the same price. If the disciple can reach that through some easier way, hey, then the disciple is better than the teacher. In other words, there's no shortcut. The same path Jesus walked, we have to walk. Are you understanding? You got it? You understood? Yes or no? Okay. Example I'll give you. Just example. Suppose Jesus could become who he was uh, in his life and his ministry without prayer. Oh, I am the son of God. I don't need to pray. Suppose, I'm just saying suppose. Suppose he didn't need to pray. And he became who he was. Or, or let me put it like this. Suppose Jesus had to pray a lot he had to pray a lot to become what he was. But if you and I can become that without praying, then we are greater. But he said, the disciple is not greater than the teacher, the master. No. If Jesus had to pray in his earthly life, I'm talking about his earthly life. If he had to pray, then the disciple must also pray. Because there's no shortcut. We have to take the same path. You understand? So, it is enough for us to become like him, but we also have to make the same journey. No shortcut. Look at Luke chapter 6 and verse 40, please. Luke chapter 6. And verse 40. 
Luke chapter 6 and verse 40. Once again, Jesus is talking to his disciples. So imagine Jesus is talking to you today. Personally, he's talking to you. This is what he will tell you. This is what he will tell me. Luke 6 verse 40. He said, A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So, the disciple is not greater than the teacher. But everybody, everyone, so all of us can participate. Everyone who is perfectly trained, thoroughly trained, will become like his teacher. See what Jesus is saying. He's saying, that means if he, if the, the teacher, if he thoroughly trains us and we go through his training, then we will become like him. That's what he said. Correct? So you and I must have the heart. Lord, please thoroughly train me. Right? So why don't we put our right hand up? And say this with me, Lord Jesus, I want to be like you. Perfectly train me so I can become like you. Amen? That's what Jesus said. The disciple is not greater than the teacher, but everybody, all of us, everyone who is perfectly trained. So we are going through his training. Lord Jesus, you train me. Sometimes the training is hard. Sometimes it's the training may be challenging. But it's okay. Because one day we can become like Jesus. We go through the training. So that's what we are trying to do. A little bit of it here. It's only three years. Little bit. It's a lifelong journey. I, I'm not saying after three years you and I will become like Jesus. No. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll become a little closer to being like Jesus. But remember, this is a lifelong journey. I say, Lord Jesus, you perfectly train me. Perfectly train me. Perfectly train me. Make me more like you. Because, he said, everyone who is perfectly trained will become like his teacher, like his master. Right? So our call is to become like our master. As a disciple, we have to become like Jesus. We are his disciples. But he said he will perfectly train us. So we must yield to that training. We must surrender ourselves to the training. We must uh, be, submit ourselves to his training in our lives. You train me, Lord, so I can become like you. And it's, it's an ongoing journey. Okay. All right. So I want us to understand that this is God's plan. This plan of you and I becoming like Jesus. It's the Father's plan. Right from the beginning of time, the Father planned. That he will send his son into this world. And everyone who believes in him, his plan is that we would all become like Jesus. That's the Father's plan from the beginning. So if we go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. 28, 28 Romans 8, 28, 29. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. 
For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So he says, yeah, everything is working together for good. To those who love God and those who are called to his purpose. So you and I are called by God for his purposes. So you are here for his purposes. And one expression of God's purpose is this. It says in verse 29, that whomever he foreknew, and this God knew ahead of time, these are the people who are going to say yes to the call. He, he's calling everybody. And those who say yes to the call, they become the called. And those whom he knew, he predestined, that is, he pre-planned ahead of time. He had a plan. What was his plan? That all of these people would be conformed to the image of his son, so that he will be the first among many brethren. So you and I are like family with the Lord Jesus. He's our elder brother, the first. We are his brethren. But the Father's plan is that we will all be conformed to the image of his Son. That means we'll all become like Jesus. That's the Father's plan. You with me? So the Father planned ahead of time. He pre-planned. That all of us who say yes to Jesus, yes to the call, we will be conformed to the image of his son. We will become like Jesus. That's the Father's plan. That's the Father's purpose for you and me. Right? So what is God doing in your life? What is God doing in my life? He's conforming us to the image of Jesus. Or making us more and more like Jesus. That's his plan. That's his purpose. So personally, even as you and I are preparing for ministry and preparing to serve the Lord personally. That should be our goal. I want to be more like Jesus. Yes, you may be an, become an evangelist. You may become a pastor. You may become a prophet. You may become an apostle. You may become something in the ministry. That is fine. But the call of God on your life is for you and me. For us to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus, to become like Jesus. Other things we will do. Yeah, we will preach, we will pastor, we will do all the other ministry, the work we will do. But the main purpose of God is for you and me to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ, to become like Jesus. So that must become very clear. So what is your purpose? Not to become a pastor. What is your purpose? Not to become uh, a preacher. What is your purpose? Not to become an apostle or this or that. My purpose, my calling is to become like Jesus. And as part of that, I will serve God. And if he has called me to serve as a pastor, I will serve as a pastor. If he's called me to serve as a prophet, I will serve as a prophet. If he's called me to serve as something else, I'll serve. That is okay. But that is not the whole purpose. The purpose of God is for us to become like Jesus. That's the purpose. So we'll not forget that. This is, what, this is my journey. This is what I'm going forward for. Right? So as we... Make this journey. God will work in us. God is working in us. So he's not saying, you do this on your own. We can't do it on our own. So God is working in us. One of the ways, of course, he works in us by his Holy Spirit. So we're not alone. We're not trying to become like Jesus on our own. We cannot. But the Holy Spirit works, making us like Jesus. So let's read 2 Corinthians 3.18. You all with me so far? Yes or no? Yes? Okay. 
Let's go. Second Corinthians three eighteen. Second Corinthians three eighteen. It says here in 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. I'll just wait another minute. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. But be all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So it's telling what we are doing. But we all, all of us, are looking at Jesus. Now, of course, it says, we are beholding as though we are looking through a glass. So imagine, you know, uh, if we have to see through a glass that is not very clean, uh, we can't see very clearly. But we can see something outside. So he's, he's having that picture here. We are beholding, we are looking as though through a glass. It's dim, it's not absolutely clear. We are looking at the glory of the Lord. And as we are looking at the glory of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is changing us. From glory to glory into that same image. So, what is our position? Our position is look at Jesus. Hmm? Don't look at the pastor because sometimes pastor may be nice, sometimes pastor may not be nice. Don't look at this person or that person because there is no perfect person. Sometimes we get disappointed. Bible says, all of us are beholding the glory of the Lord. We're looking at Jesus. Yeah, it is dim, meaning you can't see clearly. We're not seeing him exactly as we would see him in heaven. But our focus is on Jesus. And as we're looking to him, the Holy Spirit is doing some work in us. He's changing us from glory to so, how are we going to become more like Jesus? Well, Holy Spirit is working. So one of the emphasis that we are going to place these three years is depend on the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask Him to strengthen you. Ask Him to change us in areas we need change. Talk to Him. Commune with the Holy Spirit. He's, our, he's here with us. He's living in you. So Holy Spirit, help me. Change my... I'm very angry, man. Oh, Holy Spirit, please make me calm. Holy Spirit, I don't have enough patience. Oh, Lord, help me to be patient. Lord, I'm not being kind to people. Oh, God, help me. Give me some... Help me to be kind to people. So Holy Spirit is working in us. And He produces a fruit. Love, joy, peace, kindness meekness, gentleness, self-control, all these things He's producing, He's working in us. But who's doing it? Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Yeah. So how are we going to become like Jesus? Holy Spirit, helping in each of us. It's not, we're not on our own. We're not struggling on our own. We are depending on the Holy Spirit. And he's changing us from glory to glory. So hopefully people will see some change. <laughs> then when you go home, something different, what happened? Slight glory to glory. <laughs> Holy Spirit is changing me. Making me more like Jesus. Maybe I used to be a very angry man. Now I become calm. Maybe I used to be very unkind, now I become kind. So the Holy Spirit is, is producing these things in us. He's working. But we are keeping our eyes on Jesus. He's changing us. Right? So, uh, learn to spend uh, a, a, a lot of time uh, with the Holy Spirit. 
praying, praying in tongues. That's how we encourage you. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Spend time in the Word of God, pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit will help us. Second way, um, second way that God is working in us is through His Word. So let's go. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Second Timothy. Yeah, so I uh, I did not put out any notes for this. Uh, today's teaching. It's uh, so I would just encourage everybody, please take take notes, take the chapter and verse, um, and just write it down. Um, Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen. Notice what it says here. Second Timothy chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. Um, I will. Uh, uh, I'll get the PDF put up on the. Um, the main audi i mean it's just an outline i don't have much thing but second timothy 3 16 and 17. all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable or it's useful for doctrine that means to teach for reproof that means to give conviction for correction that is to correct us for instruction in righteousness, so to train us in how to live right, to train us in godliness. And look at verse 17. That the man of God, or you can say that the woman of God, or the servant of God, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good, so look at that. Do you want to be a complete servant? Do you want to be a servant who is thoroughly equipped for every good work? How does it happen? All scripture is given by God. And through his scriptures, through his word, he will teach us. He will give us conviction. He will give us correction. And he will give us instruction, that is training, in righteousness. So that's the second way, through his word, all scripture. He will thoroughly equip us for every good work. Are you listening? Hmm? So first, how is, God, how is the Lord? See, the Lord Jesus said, everybody who is thoroughly trained will become like him. How is he going to train us? Us, he's... By the Holy Spirit. Second is by His Word, Scriptures. By His Word. That's why we are going to spend a lot of every lecture, every lecture, it's the Scriptures. Right? Now, many we will be giving you many books. Now, I'm sorry, most of these books I wrote, but don't think, ah, oh, I am listening or I'm reading. They're forcing me to read only his books. Don't think like that. The reason we are printing it is we can give it to you for free. Not just you, but people everywhere, all across, we give it for free. Otherwise, if we say, go buy this book from their bookshop with 300 rupees, 500 rupees, then how many books you can buy? But we said, no, we will write, we will print. Then we can give it for free. But it's only scripture. Yeah, It's just based on scripture. So don't think, oh, they're making me only read his books. No, no, no. There's a reason why we print and give it, because then we can give it for free for, for so many years. You know, From the last 20 years, we've been giving the books for free. That's why we print, we distribute. So you don't have, people don't have to spend money. You understand it? So don't take it in a wrong sense. Oh, they're making me read only his books. That's not the point. The point is, we can give these things for free. Because we want people to receive the word of God. You understand? So, but every book is based on scripture. 
the, the goal is to learn the scriptures. Because it is the scripture that will thoroughly equip you and me for every good. So we must know the scripture. Don't worry about what some theologian said and some other person. Lots of theologians will say lots of things. Don't worry about that. You need to know what does the scripture say. What does the scripture say? Read the scriptures. You read it directly. Try to understand it directly. Because it's through the scriptures, through the word of God, you and I are equipped to serve God. Amen? So, read your Bible. You read your Bible. These books will help you read your... It'll point you to the Bible. It'll tell you to go read the Bible. Read the scriptures. So, we, we'll give all of these materials out for free and, and say, no, you read it. And we can give it for free because it's not printed by somebody else. We, we are printing it. We give it to you for free. But you need to go back to the Bible. You need to... Um, uh, you know, you need to go into the Word of God because it's God's Word that will make you complete. Amen? It's God's Word that will thoroughly prepare you, like Jesus said. If you're thoroughly trained, you'll become like the Master. So we have to go to the Scriptures. Amen? And one more point, the last, third, third way that God is going to shape us and mold us is in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We look at this and after a few minutes we'll go for a break. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to read verses 11 to 13. Ephesians 4. 11 to 13, right? So how is the Lord Jesus going to perfectly train us? First, by His Holy Spirit. Second, through His Word. And all are important, right? I'm not, I just said one first and second, but the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, both of God, God, very important. And now we're looking at a third way that the Lord has put. Ephesians 4. 11 to 13, it says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So what are these verses saying? Ephesians 4, 11 to 13. He's saying that the Lord Jesus, he appointed some people to be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists. That means these are people who are ministering. Now why has he put, why has he raised some people like this? It says, verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So, these people, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, what do they do? One of the things they do is they, they train, they equip God's people for ministry. So this is the third way that you are going to be trained. Through the people here who are going to Give to you. Right? So there will be pastors, teachers, others coming here. They will teach you. But Jesus has, the Lord has put this as a method that through the apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, the saints will be equipped for ministry. And not only for ministry, it says through them, you know, through the ministry, through, the, through, the, through their work, we will all be brought to the unity of the faith. To know Jesus, to know to the knowledge of the Son of God, that is, to know Him, and it says that we will come to the full measure of the stature of Christ. That means we will all grow up to become more and more like Jesus. That's the goal. How is He fulfilling that goal? Through these ministries, He is equipping the saints. The same thing will happen in your life. One day. Some of you will be pastors, some of you will be teachers, some of you will be evangelists, some of you may be apostles, some of you may be prophets, whatever ministry God raised you up. 
He will raise you up for that. For what? So that you can then equip more believers. You will equip them and help them grow into the full measure of the stature of Christ. You're with me so far? So three ways that, that he is training you and me. He's helping you and me become more like Jesus. One is by his spirit, by his word, and through the ministry of uh, people, the people who are ministering, whom has raised up to minister. Through them, the saints are being equipped and being brought to the full measure of the stature of Christ. So he's doing that today. But, and so, you know, we must be willing to learn to look at these people. Learn from them. So look at First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse one. Look at what the apostle Paul said. First Corinthians eleven, verse one. First Corinthians eleven, verse one. The apostle Paul wrote. First Corinthians eleven, verse one. Imitate me, just as I also imitate Christ. Now, what did Paul tell his tell the people, Corinthians believers? Say, you follow me, just as I also follow Jesus. So, what does that mean? That means we can learn from the examples of men and women of God. As long as they are following Jesus, don't learn from the bad example. <laughs> learn from their good example. So he says, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. So we have to be discerning. You know, you look at us or you look at any of these, you know, preachers and teachers. As long as that, that person is following Jesus, it's okay. You can learn from his life. Or her life and learn from their example but if they are not following Jesus if they're not doing something that actually represents Jesus then don't follow that leave it you understand that? so he said imitate me as I also imitate Jesus so in that same line we can learn we can follow but if it's not aligned to Jesus don't because our goal is to become like Jesus. That's the goal. It's good that you can see some good examples. You see, oh yeah, that's nice. I will follow that example. That's nice. I will follow that example. Oh, but that's not nice. That's not like Jesus. Then I won't follow that. Because our goal is to become like Jesus. So that must be very clear. Amen? So, in this first session, um, we have emphasized our call. We'll talk more after we come back from a break. We'll talk about, you know, uh, how to follow Jesus in our lifestyle. Look at the lifestyle of Jesus and say, hey, if Jesus lived like this, I must also live like that. Because there is no shortcut. We must walk the same path. The disciple is not greater than the master. So look at the master's life. Oh, if he lived like that, I also must live like that. Right? We will talk about the lifestyle of Jesus when we come back after the break. But now I want all of us to say, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. I know bell rang. We'll take one minute to pray. And you just pray. Lord Jesus, I want to be like you. I'm your disciple. You said it is enough for the disciple to be like the master. Lord, we just, each one of us and those who are online, we pray that we will desire to be like you, Jesus. That will be our goal. That will be our purpose. That is our calling to be like Jesus. Change us. Make us more and more like Jesus in our life in every part of our being make us more like 
Jesus. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11. Thank you.